Welcome back to Ziki One Plays. I'm so glad that you guys have joined me today. And today on my channel, I'm going to be doing another VGC team. And here's the team now uh, that I'm going to be sharing with you guys, both here as a team ID for use in game and also as a Poke Pace that you can use on Pokemon Showdown. I'm very proud of this team. It's been performing pretty well. Very, uh, very happy with how I've been doing with it. Been actually laddering pretty well with it online. Time to see now how it's going to work in game. So it is a Trick Room team, a hard Trick Room team with two different Trick Room setters, making sure that we have plenty of coverage for all the different speed options in the game right now. For Rigoraf, who is a Trick Room setter that has the Armor Tail ability, preventing the opponents from using uh, priority moves, and then also Hatterene with a Focus Sash, meaning that uh, there's pretty little that they can do to stop Trick Room from going up from Hatterene. Torkoal, one of the best Trick Room sweepers in the game. And then we have Gastrodon, another great Trick Room sweeper. Um, very high special attack investment on that set with the Wiki Berry because Gastrodon is just um, pretty bulky in general. And then we have Hariyama, one of the best Trick Room Pokemon in the game right now. Also just good in general with that fake out, close combat, heavy slam, wide guard uh, set. And then Tropius, a little bit spicier Pokemon, very bulky, as long as it's not getting hit by ice moves, which is why we run the Yachi Berry. Um, but it also has access to wide guard, another great great status move for this time in the game right now where there's a lot of spread moves being thrown around if you don't believe me just look at my team even on my team i've got muddy water dazzling gleam eruption and hyper voice and any of those are going to be stopped by spread move protection such as wide guard so got to be careful i don't run into someone else using um, a, a very strong wide guard strategy so i think we've got a lot uh, of options here and so hariyama helps hatterene get up trick room hariyama helps farigraph get up trick room farigraph helps Hatterene get up Trick Room. We have a lot of different options that we can use to get Trick Room going. And then uh, we just got to knock out their Pokemon before they knock us out or before they outlast the Trick Room. So, should be looking pretty good. Here we are searching for a uh, opposing trainer, and I'm so excited to get into this Trick Room team. I went 7-4 and four, uh, with that previous team using Ravska. Honestly, it was so much fun, but it was not uh, just an incredible team. It had a lot of weaknesses. But this team I'm a little bit more confident in, so I'm really excited to get into it. And here's our first opponent, a Screens team, it looks like, uh, with the Grimmsnarl and the Garganuckle. Also with the Vaporeon. It's a pretty tough-looking team, uh, very, very bulky. But I still think that we're going to be able to, to fend them off. Um, if you didn't see it already in the team breakdown, my Farigaraf has Psychic Fangs, which destroys Screens. Uh, so that's going to help me somewhat here. And I think that's my move. Trick Room set up with Farigaraf. Actually, I don't know, because Farigaraf can be spored. Yeah, let's go with uh, Hatterene Hariyama lead, which is a very good uh, standard lead here. And then I think I'm going to have to bring... Yeah, I don't, I don't really need Frigograph except for to destroy screens. So, um, But it, it's good to have her anyway, him. Um, let's do that, and then let's also do Better Camel, I think, because he hits a lot of things very hard. The other option would be Bad Banana. Yeah, I'm going to go Ezra Miller. All right, here we go. These uh, <laughs> nicknames are killing me. All right, now... The reason I ended up going Gastrodon there at the end is because of the Storm Drain ability is going to make me where I highly resist uh, whatever Vaporeon is bringing out. And also, uh, I, I realize that Gastrodon hits a lot of things super effectively as well, namely the Garganuckle if they decide to bring that. So, might have overthought this a little bit, but maybe not. Amoongus and Grimmsnarl come out. And I don't have to fear a Spore into my Hatterene. I do need to fear it into the Hariyama. So uh, I'm definitely going to click Trick Room here because I don't think there's anything they can do about it necessarily. Um, so Trick Room here. And then Fake Out. Hmm. Fake Out the Grim Snarl, maybe? I'm not sure if he gets up screens before my Fake Out comes in or not. Or do I go straight into Farigaraf? That might be better, actually. In case he tries to do something priority against me. But I, I shouldn't... Uh, I don't have to fear that too much, so we'll see how it works. 
And then if he does do screens, I can just knock him out next or knock out the screens next turn. So there's the light screen. Spore and that does not hit Hatterene, of course, because of magic bounce. Um, I, I was a little worried about Spore coming into Frigograph there, but we did make the right call in switching because now I can Psychic Fangs the Amoongus and just straight up Dazzling Gleam, I think. I think that's what we're going to do. I'm probably getting Spored here uh, from the Amoongus slot. Is there any switch I can make? There's not really a switch I can make. So I think we're going to have to take the Spore on the mouth uh, if if that's what he's going to go for. But we'll still Psychic things here just to make sure. There comes the Reflect. And Spore going to come out? Or is it going to be an attack? No, Spore doesn't come out. I guess that's not minimum speed Amoongus. But it does come out after my Hatterene hits. That's good to know. I still don't think we're in that bad of a spot here. Because I can just keep, keep Dazzling Gleaming. I don't know that there's much that they can do here. Now, who are they going to be switching into here soon? Um, I'm not sure. I think I just want to keep Dazzling Gleaming because they're not really threatening me at this point, and getting off that Psychic Fangs is pretty important. Sylveon? Nope. Garganaco. All right, here we go. There comes the Clear Smog to get a little bit of damage into my Hatterene. And I think I'm going to hard switch on the Hatterene into Gastrodon. Because I'm not expecting a Spore into that slot. And I'm going to go for the Psychic Fangs once again. They're not prioritizing damage into this for Rigoraf, uh, which could be problematic for them in the long game. But I guess we'll have to see how that works. Clear Smog does nothing to the Gastro. There comes Salt here into Ferrigarath. Doing nothing, but it's going to do a lot over time. And I still am sleeping. Are you kidding me? All right. Expecting the Spore and the Salt Cure, I am going to protect Gastrodon. And then let the Psychic Things come down. And then next turn, I'll do some damage. What do I have of Trick Room left? Two turns? No, this is my last turn of Trick Room. I need to keep that in mind as well. Withdrawing Garganuckle to go into Grimmsnarl. No Vaporeon. Okay. Expecting a water move. Well done. The Spore was the correct prediction. Psychic Fang's going to come out now and destroy the screens. And get some good damage into that Amoongus. Not bad. I think another Psychic Fang's might just knock out Amoongus. So we're going to go for that once again, I believe. Or do I switch out for the Salt here to go away? Um, no, I don't, I don't think I do. I think I... Ice Beam the Amoongus. And let's check speed stats just to make sure that we're not going to be uh, over uh, outsped here. 43 and 30. I think that I'm going to outspeed the Amoongus. It's worth the risk, in my opinion. Um, so, yes. Ice Beam into Amoongus and Trick Room. Amoongus protects, that's not bad for me. I don't think that Vaporeon can knock out. It's going to be absorbed by Gastrodon. Does not knock out the Frigoraph. We're in a pretty good position here, folks. Does not knock out the Furigaraf, which is good. 
We're going to Earth Power into Vaporeon. And he's probably not, actually, you know what? He's probably not going to spore the Ferrigarath because it's dying. So we're going to switch back into Hatterene here. And then we're going to Psychic Fangs, the Amoongus, hoping to catch the spore into the Gastrodon slot. Even though we just caught some water damage, I think it's still worth it. Um, and we caught the boost from the water. He withdraws Amoongus into Gl Grimmsnarl. Most likely. Oh, Garganonkle. Okay, that'll work. We'll catch Garganonkle off guard next turn, I believe, with a ground-type Terra coming out. Okay, not bad. That is not bad at all, because now I have two uh, hard-hitting Pokemon coming in here. Hariyama has not activated Flame Orb yet, so we're going to fake out for that reason. And I'm going to Terra Blast the Garganonkle. The other option would be to double target the Garganonkle, but I think Terra Blast should straight knock it out. We will see. Going into Grimmsnarl here. Terra Blast still going to do a lot to the Grimmsnarl. And faking out the Vaporeon was the right move. Opponent sure is switching a lot, and I think he's doing that to cover for uh, Trick Room. He's trying to stall out Trick Room turns. But the thing is, my team hits so hard that it's going to be able to uh, punch through, I believe. Terra Blast going to do a lot. Don't know if it'll knock out. Probably won't. Now we get the Flame Orb proc here on my Hariyama, and I believe the combination of Dazzling Gleam. Of course, I could get faked out here by the Grim Snarl, and if that is the case, that's okay. I still think we close combat and we Dazzling Gleam. Any light screens. That could have an effect on the end game. We're going to have to see. That makes me want to protect my Hariyama just a little bit more strongly. I was expecting a fake out there, to be honest, so I'm glad he did not fake out. That does straight knock out the Vaporeon. I think we're going to double target the Garganacle on this last turn to ensure the win. But we're going to have to wait and see. Man, that Amoongus gained so much health back. It's ridiculous. We're going to heavy slam the Garganacle as well. And Amoongus can't spore here. He is going to change the Terra type of the Garganacle. And it is Ghost type. He's expecting a close combat there. I don't think we're going to knock it out now because it's not super, uh, super effective damage, but we are going to get a lot of damage into it. That frees me up next turn to Dazzling Gleam. Good grief, it does nothing. I don't believe it can knock me out this turn, so we're going to Trick Room once again and Heavy Slam the Amoongus, I believe. Here's the Protect from the Amoongus, and I think that guarantees Trick Room up. Salt Cure, or is he going another Body Place? That does knock out the Hatterene. That's unexpected. I 
I still think we win this endgame. We're going to have to wait and see. But we are absolutely double targeting the uh, Among Us this turn because a Spore would put him back in the game. So we're going to Ice Beam and we're going to Heavy Slam and try to ensure that that slot goes down. If he double protects, that's going to be... Okay, he does not double. There's the Heavy Slam. Even with a Berry, I think Ice Beam's going to take it out. But it is Rocky Helmet. I do remember that now. There comes Salt Cure. Yeah, I think we just win this game now with uh, Gastrodon carrying out the damage that we need here against the Garganuckle. So the Amoongus outsped my Gastrodon. Meaning that he could have spored that slot and really had a chance to win this game. But that is not what he did. We're going to get one more small heavy slam off into that, that Garganuckle slot. Um, I think we're going to Earth Power. And Heavy Slam just for a, a slight bit more damage. Oh yeah, that's good damage actually. Critical hit, okay. There's a Recover, okay. That could make things interesting. Depending on how much damage this is. Yeah, yeah, that could very well make things interesting. I could lose this very easily now. <laughs> good grief. I guess I, I'm debating on what to go for here. Muddy Water is about the same amount of power and it could cause uh, accuracy drops, so I think that's what we're going to try. I don't have much of a chance here unless I have like a stat drop or an accuracy drop, and of course I missed the one Muddy Water that I needed to possibly have a chance here, so um, man, yeah, not much we can do. I will say this team is better suited against um, the more offensive teams, which dominate the meta, you know, uh, which is what I expected to face. But of course, our first game, game one, is against one of those very bulky teams that doesn't really care about the high levels of damage that I'm sending their way. So it is what it is. At this point, I'm going to take the L, and uh, we're going to get back in another game here in just a moment. All right, here we are, game two, against Finn. This is more of what I've expected to find on the ladder, not that last game, which was so bulky. That whole team was so strong. Um, this is definitely Tailwind, Murkrow, um, Garchomp, and Golden Go have spread moves, which is good against Wide Guard. I mean, Wide Guard is, is a good block to that. Hydreigon, which probably has an interesting Terra type, and then we have Mouse Hold, which is uh, easily able to KO a lot of Mons in this, in this metagame. I think Hariyama covers a lot because Fake Out into Mouse Hold is devastating to them, as well as the the spread moves being covered by Hariyama's Wide Guard. Outside of that, I think uh, Sammy is definitely my best Trick Room setter because it cannot uh, go down to a Taunt nor a Final Gambit because of Focus Sash and Magic Bounce. Uh, and then I think in the back, we're going to want Ezra Miller for sure. And I don't see a lot of priority, so I'm going to say Torkoal. And we've got our wide guard in Drax now, so we don't necessarily need Bad Banana. Um, yeah, all right, that's what I'm going to go with. Hopefully we have a better game here in game number two. Mouse Hold and Garchomp, uh, this is pretty simple for me. Garchomp does not threaten my Hatterene, and Mouse Hold does. So we fake out the Mouse Hold, and we Trick Room. A Rock Slide Flinch could cause uh, a break in my game plan. 
or a ghost mouse hold, although I'm not expecting that. Oh my goodness, that scared me. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a ghost type mouse hold, but it's not. That is nice. Rock Slide Flinch is the only thing now that could screw up my game plan, and it does not. So I think that we just win now. Uh, and I, I know that that sounds like I'm bragging, but I've got a Dazzling Gleam here that will knock out Garchomp, uh, especially if he does not protect. Well, actually, it may not knock out at this range. I'm not positive. Um, and then I've got a Heavy Slam for the Mouse Hold, probably, in case they swap. Yeah, we'll Heavy Slam. And we'll Dazzling Gleam. Dazzling Gleam going to do a lot to that Garchomp. Over half. Well done. Heavy Slam going to clean up the mouse hold. We got rid of their Terra typing, so they can't surprise us with anything else. And now we're going to take some big damage on one of my Mons from the Garchomp, but I'm not sure which Pokemon he's going to target down. We could be looking at a choice set from the Garchomp. I'm not positive. Should be able to clean this one up pretty quick. I hope that Golden Go comes in next, um, and I'll show you why here in just a moment. It is indeed Golden Go. So uh, my dear Sammy here, by the way, Sammy is my wife's name, and Hatterene is probably one of my favorite shinies that I've ever got, so that's why, of course, her name is that. Um, I'm going to close combat the Garchomp. And watch this. Terastalize Terra Blast into Golden Go is typically a one-hit KO on the Golden Go on these more offensive teams. And it normally throws them way off their uh, their rocker. So check this out. I should get a double KO here, and my opponent should forfeit unless they want to play it out. But here we go. My team performing exactly as I designed it to. And Hatterene is going to send out the Terra Blast, the ground-type Terra Blast, knocking out the Golden Go. Oh, it hangs on with one HP. That's okay. Even if both Pokemon are knocked out here, I still win the game, I believe. Uh, we're going to have to wait and see. And I don't think both will be knocked out, although I, I could be wrong. Actually, you know what? I forgot I've taken Chip from Rock Slide, so yeah, both should go down here, and that's okay. Look at me bragging about the range there on the Golden Go. But most Golden Goes ha do go down to a, a Terra Blast from Hatterene, but that's okay. I'm not too upset about it. Like I said, having Torkoal and Gastron in the back, I believe, is just... Uh, a win, unless they both get double protects here. But Eruption is 100% accurate. So, barring any priority. Yeah, I, I, again, I think that this is is good game to my opponent. We're definitely going to Earth Power the Annihilate and Eruption, because Eruption is going to hit Golden Go no matter what, unless there's a Wide Guard on the team somewhere. I guess I should say that to you. Wide Guard would definitely throw off my game plan here. There comes Eruption, and I think we win. Almost knocking out the Annihilate in one hit as well. And there's the Earth Power for the win. That's game two, and what a quick one. And that is a great example of how this team is supposed to perform. Obviously, game one, I think I still could have won against that bulky team. I just made a couple of rough calls. Um, but, but also, you know, more slow, bulky teams are harder for this team to handle for sure. Hope you guys enjoyed trying this team out. And we'll be back with more episodes of this VGC Ranking Up team uh, very shortly. So thank you so much for tuning in. Like and subscribe. And as always, you guys stay safe. And uh, peace out.